Here's a quick explanation of how I do thread milling on my CNC mill. When I first started looking into info on how to do thread milling, I couldn't find any good tutorials or videos. I saw plenty of videos on YouTube of it being done, but none on how to do it. So that's what this video is going to be about. We'll start out looking at the tool that I'm going to be using today. I use these scientific uh, cutting tools, single point thread mills. As you can see, they're a, uh, just a, a very simple design. It has a little 60 degree triangle cut as the, uh, the cutting portion of the tool. The one that I'm going to be using uh, in this example is going to have a 3 inch, 3 8 inch shaft, a 0 .290 cutting diameter, it can cut up to one inch deep threads and uh, the most important thing you need to look at is this section right here the recommended TPI and that is threads per inch you can cut anywhere from 14 to 40 threads per inch and I chose that one because it was uh, right in the area of all the threads that I wanted to do on my mill and so that's the one that I'm going to be using today so this tool does not create a perfect thread. Uh, it creates a perfect triangle, but as you can see in a little bit, threads are not perfect triangles. So look at this. This is the profile of a UN thread, a unified thread profile. Note that the triangles are cut off at the top and the bottom the upper one-eighth of the triangle is cut off and the lower one-quarter of the triangle is cut off. However, when we use a sharp 60 degree thread mill, the sharp edges are made into this inside portion of the thread. And so, instead of making this little radius section in the real thread, we make sharp edges. This is generally okay but it does make the threads slightly weaker whenever we use a single point thread mill. Now the, the problem here is that most thread milling software assumes that you're going to be using a thread mill with the profile of the exact thread you want to make. So it makes the profile including these radius corners and does not make these sharp edges like the single point thread mill uh, that I'm going to be using does. So what we have to do is compensate for that extra depth of cut in, uh, in the software in order to make the correct uh, profile for the threads that you want to make. So in order to determine the extra th depth of cut required, uh, we have to look at the geometry of the thread and calculate that extra, that extra depth. First, you need to know how long this extra one quarter of the triangle is. And to do that, uh, I like this website at gizmology.net called Nuts and Bolts. And it's called Notes on Nuts and Bolts. And it has a really good diagram of how the threads work. And this shows the profile of a UN thread. And that is the pitch of the thread, that is the uh, number of threads per inch, is the length of these triangles, the, the length of the sides of the one of these triangles. The, as we talked about before, the cutoff portion of the top of the triangle is one-eighth of the height of the triangle, and the bottom cutoff portion, the radius edge there, it, the bottom section of that is two-eighths or one-quarter of the height of the triangle. And then the actual depth of the thread in a UN profile is five-eighths of the height of the triangle. Now, to determine the height of this triangle, what you need to do is figure out how high the triangle is. And you do that because you know the length of one side. So in my case, I am going to be doing a 16 TPI or uh, 1 16th of an inch is the pitch. So 1 divided by 16 equals 0 0.625 inches. And for an equilateral triangle, 
the altitude or the height of any side, h, is the square root of 3 divided by 2 times the side, the uh, length of the side. So we know the length of the side is 0 0.625 inches. And now we'll take 3 and we'll do the square root of 3. And we will divide that by 2. 0 0.86602. And we'll just get rid of the everything after the ten thousandths. So 0.866 times the length of the side, which is the pitch, 1 16th of an inch in my case, 0 0.06. Uh, messed that up, didn't I? Times 0 0.0625 equals 0 0.054125. All right, we'll just use 0 0.0541. And so we know that the height of a triangle that has an equilateral triangle, which is what 60 degree threads are, is 0 0.054. 1, 2, 5 inches high. All right, now that we know that, we can determine the rest of the dimensions of the triangle. So we know that this total height is 0 0.054125. If we want to figure out the height of the thread, we can multiply that by 5 eighths or 0.625. And so we know that this height is 0 0.0338 inches. But what we're most interested in is how much deeper our single point thread has to go in order to make the full profile. So we'll multiply 0 0.054125, the height of the triangle, times 1 quarter, or 0 0.25. Okay. So, we know that a single point thread mill needs to go an additional 0 0.0135 inches in order uh, over what a thread mill that is specifically designed for the pitch you're cutting needs to go. So, a thread mill specifically designed would only need to go the depth of this triangle, but since we're using the single point, we have to go this additional depth, and that additional depth for 16 uh, threads per inch is 0 0.0135. Now, in order to figure out your G code, I use Advent 2008, and you can download that for free from the advent-threadmill.com website. On their download section and this advent programming software and uh, it's free you just have to register with them and you'll get the software so here's how to use that software you set up the first thing to do need to do in the software is to set up your tool we'll be using a single custom tool and in our case, if you recall, the diameter of the cutting section was 0 0.290 inches. The diameter, uh, the length of the cut is 1.0 inches. And the tool that I'm using has four, four flutes. Now I need to set up the size of the thread that you'll be using. In my case, my thread will be a 1 and 3 16th inch major diameter and it will be 16 TPI, so that's 1 space 3 sixteenths dash 16. And I want 0.9 inches of thread length. So let's set up the rest of uh, the settings for me. Major diameter is 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Minor diameter is automatically calculated to 1.198. Now, since you know the geometry of the threads, you could figure out exactly what that minor diameter is. Or you can use something like G-Wizard, which is super handy. 
GWizard has this thread built into it. It uh, tells you right here the length of the, uh, the actual thread depth. And if you are using a lathe, uh, this would be very handy because it already gives you the extra depth you need for making a uh, single point thread cut. However, that number is not useful for us because we're thread milling. So we still have to go back and, and do it manually the way I showed you. So we know that the minor diameter is correctly inputted into the uh, software. We, uh, and I just lost all my settings, so let me put them back in there. And this is going to make me do it one more time. We have our pitch correctly set at 1 16th. And so everything here is correct. So now we click on the NC program section. And it gives us uh, the diagram of how the tool will move. These are the, uh, the lead-in moves. And you can set on this new, that section we showed before, inside or outside threads, and this will automatically change uh, whether it cuts the insides or the outsides. Now, I already have it here, but by default, that is set to a 0.0, .0 inches of correction. And this is where we make the extra uh, de deep cut because we have the single point thread mill. So we'll put in 0 0.0135 inches here. And since we need to cut an extra 0 0.135 inches deep, we need to put a minus on that correction. And if we click on NC code, it'll regenerate the code for us. And we will have the G code to create our thread mill. And there's lots and lots of extra options you can do here. You can do it in multiple stages, and it actually does it intelligently. It doesn't just do it in, if you wanted to do four stages, it doesn't do one quarter each, because since you're making a triangle cut, the deeper you cut, the wider the cut, and the more uh, material you're removing. So it actually does that intelligently and uh, stacks the cuts to keep a constant amount of material being moved. In this case, we'll just do it in one stage and this is the output. Now to determine if you have uh, the correct thread depths, you can see what your thread depth is by using this number right here on the I, from the I and the J in these arc movements. So this will tell you the outside uh, motion, this 0.462 is the radius of the tool, that's this line right here. Now your tool will then cut an additional depth that is equal to half of the diameter of the cutter, the radius of the cutter, will come to this red line right here. So let's figure out exactly how deep we're cutting. So this is the, diam the radius of the cut, 0.4622. Now we know that we have a 0 .290 uh, diameter cutter. That means that the radius is 0.145. So that will cut an additional 0.145 inches. So in looking at the diagram, if we are over here on this side, this section is the uh, 0.4622. This is 0.4622, and then the, the cutter will actually cut an additional 0.145 inches deep. Now, we multiply that number by 2 to get the diameter of this cut, and we have 0.1214 inches. We'll save that, and we'll figure out if that's the correct number. We do that 
by taking the extra depth that we need, which was 0 0.0135 inches, multiplying that by 2 for the diameter because we're calculating radiuses. That's 0 0.027. And we'll add that to the major diameter of the thread, which is point one is one point one eight seven five for one and three sixteenths. One two one point two one four five. Compare that to what we got before. And we're within one ten thousandth there. So this is the correct G code. So we can use this to create a correct thread profile with a single point thread mill. And now I will go and I will show you making, me making this cut on the mill. So now we're ready to cut the threads that we just made in Advent 2008. And let's see how they work. program finishes up. As you can see, the inside there, I had made a little bit of a mistake. I had, whenever I was interpolating this hole, my jib came loose and it caused that hole to get bigger than it should have been. I have bad luck with these buffer tubes. I believe that I can fix that, uh, so this is just a good test for me to run this new program on. And so, even with that little bit of extra width there, we can still see if the thread matches up to a buffer tube just like we uh, intended it to. So now we'll check that. Alright, got the buffer tube installed and as you can see, it threads in very smoothly. Not a, much slop in there, just a uh, nice tight fit. Not too tight and not too loose. Put that castle nut down. And that's a solid connection. So that's how you thread mill an accurate thread.